I wonder what the students have to say at this point. Hey, Declan. Hey, Asanda. What's happening? I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to see you again. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> That's, oh, you see, now you're going to make me sad. And I was all focused on the mat and, you know, just ready no, and no, going. No, we still are. We still we're still, are. still here. We're still here. Yeah. Okay, but did you have fun, though? I did have fun. You see? I really had a lot of fun. That's all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. So you can go ahead and ask your last question. It would seem as if our sample should include children from, e from each grade as well as both boys and girls. Am I right? Well, is he right? Absolutely. This is critical. If we want to compare the extent of bullying across the grades, then we need to ensure that all of the grades are represented in the sample. And if we also want to compare the extent of bullying across the genders, then it's critical that both genders are represented in the sample. There are at least four different ways of selecting a sample. Convenience sampling, random sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified sampling. Because of the clear groups or big word strata in our data, namely grades and boys and girls, I've decided that we should use stratified sampling. Let me show you what this means. The first thing we need is a list of all of the children in the school where we're going to do the survey. For now, however, I'm going to limit the survey to involve grades 5, 6, 7, and 8. In other words, we probably just need to get the class lists for all of the classes in grades 5, 6, 7, and 8. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize them. I'm going to make a list of all of the children in grade 5. And I'll repeat that for grade 6, and I'll repeat that for grade 7, and I'll repeat that for grade 8. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my list with all of the boys. And then I'm going to put all of the girls. And I'm going to put these in alphabetical order. The next thing that we do is to select in order every 10th, 15th member of the population. The number is determined simply by the size of the sample that we'd like to work with. In our case, I think we should include every third member of the population in our research. In other words, we're going to select that boy, one, two, we're going to select that boy, miss two, we're going to select this girl, miss two, the next girl, and we're going to go through like this, selecting from the list until we've reached the end of the list. What I want you to notice is that the children who have been selected have essentially been selected at random. I didn't know who would be where on the list, but the systematic way in which I've selected the sample has ensured that grade fives, grade sixes, grade sevens, and grade eights, as well as boys and girls in each grade, are included in the sample. Because I'd like you to conduct this research in your own school, I now want you to go and get a set of class lists and to repeat the exercise that I've done here, deciding on who's in the sample and who isn't. I wonder what the students have to say at this point. Susan, Mother, can you believe this is your last question? Yes, you know. It's very sad. It is, because we've been having so much fun. You no, know, I, I enjoy maths, you know. I didn't like maths, but now I enjoy it. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'm glad something good came out of this. Yes. So why don't you go right ahead and ask your last question? I can see how the sample is representative. Next, you go interview them, right? Right, Arnott? Yes and no. 
The next stage of the data handling cycle does indeed involve collecting that data. And there are a variety of different techniques that we can use to do that. Four popular methods involve observation of the event, interviews, questionnaires or surveys, and even using existing information, if it exists. Each of these methods has advantages and disadvantages. Advantages and disadvantages that are described in your notebook. I'd like you to go and read through those right now and decide which of them is the most appropriate for the research that we are conducting. Before you do so, let me quickly have a look at each method and indicate what that method would mean in the context of our survey. Observation of the event would mean standing around in the playground or classroom and waiting for incidents of bullying to take place. When we see them, we then record the genders of the people involved and the grades in which they are. Interviews would involve actually talking to each of the participants in the research. That means having a conversation with each of them. I'm not sure how eager people would be to be interviewed. They might feel at risk for telling on each other. Questionnaires or surveys would allow anonymous participation while using existing information would involve going to the school records of all of the children involved in our sample or selected in our sample and seeing if on the school record there is some record of bullying. Which method do you think is best? In our next lesson, we're going to continue with this research project. Till next time. it is to say but hey we have to say goodbye we all had fun though yes, yes. yes. awesome stuff i'm gonna see you in our next lesson and it's bye from me and the guys bye, bye.